So I was wondering if you could bring us back to the earliest that you can remember as a little Owo Jones and a little bit of the soundscape of what it's like. But on top of that, you're in Nigeria, which is just like a whole brand new one for us. What's it like? Like, what does it sound like to be like super young in Nigeria? Uh, to be honest with you, I was like to like probably age of uh, like five years old. Then, then after that, I went to Venezuela. But for what I can remember, um, there was a lot of um, connection, connecting with everybody. Like all the neighbors knew me. Um, we, I knew the neighbors. Um, it was very hot, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, um, obviously some parts of poverty. But I did not really. I didn't grow up in the the poverty, so I got to see the the greater part of Nigeria. So, yo, what kind of music is lit in Nigeria? Do you remember any of it from when you were like five? Like what it like the vibes of it. I remember my dad used to listen a lot to Chino Pita's um Fela Kuti, which is a big those are big time legends. Um what kind of music but, uh, is they, that? but then pardon me? What kind of music is that? It's a Yoruba music, um Afro the initial Afro Afro beat. Like okay. Fela Kuti is known to be Mr. Afro beat. Okay, so basically you're starting off with those kinds of sounds at the very, very beginning of your life. And then yeah and uh yeah in, in nigeria obviously yeah. but um at that time i was not really into music per se you know i was just more into like sports uh, soccer like what you call football over there mm. yo that's honestly i'm super fascinated by that just the idea that like you were in nigeria like to me that's <laughs> cool that's like actually seeing other cultures. And then you went to Venezuela when you were five. So now you've already hopped to yeah. another continent and already done more travel than like a whole bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, um, went to Caracas, um, lived there for uh, like probably like four years. And uh, then from there, uh, came to Montreal. So what's it like in Caracas? So at this point, you've probably got some more memories because you're like in that five-ish range. Um, what's it like in Venezuela? What's the vibe? Yeah, it was. Um, Venezuela is very cool. Um, there, there's no. Uh, I had it before Chavez, you know, so it's very peaceful. Um, uh, opportunities. Um, very hot, obviously. Um, there was black people. I, I got I got to see a lot of um, white people because when I was in Nigeria, I didn't see it a lot. So I got to see a lot of white people, Spanish people, and from there, couldn't I learn Spanish? So you're already multilingual at the beginning points, right away. Like just that's how your life starts with a bunch of languages being introduced. And how many languages can you speak at this point? Uh, I could speak officially three, like fluently. English, French, and Spanish. Yo, that is fucking cool to me. So what kind of uh, music is popping in Venezuela when you're like five, six? Are you like into the dancing vibes of it? Is it like, do you, like what's, it, what's the energy? There's, there's, a lot of, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of salsa merengue. But um, at that time, um, I found uh, my my love, um, which is uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah. And uh, my, brother was, my, my brother had the Dangerous album at that time and uh i took it from him and i played it and uh I, that's when i fell in love with music um that's when i really like i love michael jackson and from there i knew that like uh something that music is gonna do something in my life you know so that's incredible so you like from the time you were like super young were able to identify because of michael jackson what's crazy is you're like the eighth or ninth person to directly link Michael Jackson to an inspiration to like wanting to pursue music or becoming like completely in love with it over his music alone. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised he's a legend, but uh, it was more it was more to to live more. I, I really love Michael Jackson for his charity work. Um, his music grew on me more and more and more, but uh, I use it more as like what he did what he meant you know then from there i started listening to his music that's so interesting so basically it's the idea of michael jackson was more impactful than michael yeah. jackson himself 
And then because he was such a fascinating person, you were able to then delve into his catalog and become interested in his music. I don't think I've heard that before. Yeah, because obviously, uh, yeah, like I obviously I knew his hit songs at, at that time, but uh, once I I I, uh, I saw his artwork, I was like, who's this guy? And uh, every time I had opportunity to to hear something or see something with Michael Jackson, then I'll hear, like, uh, and realize that this guy is an amazing person, and I just con- that love just continued, and mm-hmm. I use it like on my day day to day, and it's part of my character. And you got that from like when you were super young in Venezuela, introduced to him. So, yeah. what ended up uh, making y'all come to Montreal? Uh, let's just say, uh, my my dad had to start over his life, mm. and um, we had to start over, and we came as uh, refugees, and um, we fought our way out, try to try to get things done and was not easy. And uh, eventually I was the one in 2018 that was able to, you know, live live okay. If we could say that way. Yo, that is, that's big. So you basically, by the time you're like, let's say 10 or so, have gone from Nigeria to Venezuela. Then from Venezuela, you had to restart and go through the refugee process. Like the to like get to Canada and then integrate into Montreal and then from that point on it isn't even until you're like 18 that you get a sense of like stability let's just say something like that yeah um and it makes you humble it makes you um realize that um you're a nobody but you could become a somebody and people don't realize how lucky they are you know just the fact that they're born um in certain places you know, so um, when you're not when you're not born in those certain places and you're able to take advantage of them, um, you know that this worse automatically because you've seen worse. You know, so I'm I'm very um, humbled every day to be in Canada, to be in North America. Yeah, that's big. So like, when you after Michael Jackson, when did you really start to like develop a more broad taste in music and start to really explore it more? Um, well, in Montreal, like, uh, obviously I grew up with, uh, um, and Point St. Charles, um, Mill Burgundy, St. Henry and Lachine. Um, so there was a lot of, um, different, uh, tastes. Um, let's just say like, uh, I, I love soca. I love, um, reggae, Tupac. Um, a lot of rap, especially Lil Wayne. Mm. Um, also, I, I was a big fan of Usher. I, I'm big, I used to really love all his songs at that time. But it, it, besides that, it was just 98% Michael Jackson. Like, So basically, it was another question I would have then. So you get to Montreal, and you're not really from here. So how do you like get integrated into things? Do you end up having to go to French school then? Yeah, I had to, I had to go to French school because obviously my parents did not. Yeah, there's a rule that um, if your parents didn't go to English school in Canada, you have to, if you're in Quebec, you have to go to French school. So um, went to what we call Class d'Acquery. And uh, from there, um, learned French. Um, since I already had a, the Spanish, um, French became easy. It took me like maybe um, seven to 10 months to learn. So you're able to, uh, you were able to assimilate a lot quicker than say somebody that had no foundation then. And so you end up going to French school here and going through all of that. At any point during this, are you like discovering your passion to like actually make music or is it just like you're a fan or you're into consuming it? No, I'm, at, at that time I'm into consuming it. I'm, I'm more of a, you know, we grew up in those, in those areas I mentioned, um, obviously it was, um, poverty stricken um, and also um, not a lot of opportunities. So you basically fall into, you know, gangs and all that. So you're not really thinking about your art. You're thinking about surviving. You're thinking about um, what you can't get at home. You 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 try to get in the, with your homeboys and the people you go to school with. Right. So um, I was more of that kind of person versus 
admitting to any creative uh, opportunity from within. Yeah, you know, it's really big that you said that still because um, like, here's why I say that. Um, at this point in my life, I understand the significance of saying that that's where you grew up in those times. But I didn't know what that meant until like I was really a fully grown adult, right? Because there really is like a, a, a bit of a tale of two cities in Montreal sometimes, or probably more than two. But like I grew up in NDG, but didn't know what NDG was from the other side of NDG because we just never went DG? to the place. Yeah. Like I grew up in Costa Luke DG, right? <clears throat> I went to Wigger and yeah. I just didn't actually understand the significance of what was happening in a lot of neighborhoods or at least what a lot of people's parents were involved with or things like that because it's just the nature of things. My parents were just not there. Like we were not involved in any of that. We went up this whole other side of life and then I'm like, nah, Montreal. And then people are like, nah, bro, you don't understand. Back in the day and broke it down. But like, so even today when we look at the like geographical landscape of the, it's like not at all like what it was. It's like um, a significantly improved, at least from the, from what I understand it used to be like. So just to hear like you describe that environment in the same city that I grew up with that forced you to feel that way where you had to push the creativity to decide is pretty big to me, you know? Yeah, um, and ironically, this is a creative city. <laughs> <laughs>